All right, what we've got here is our geometry review. The way this one comes out is that this is our quarterfinal. We haven't made it as far this year as we usually make it, but COVID, right? All right, so this will be part one. We'll look at the kind of the most missed questions for this class. Um, three most missed questions are seven, four, and 28. So we'll take a quick look at question number seven. It says a searchlight rotates through a circle that has a radius of 110 feet. What is the area uh, that the searchlight covers? Round your answer to the nearest square foot. Okay, so, you know, if we were to imagine, this will let me draw on it, okay? A searchlight, right, that light comes out to something like that, okay? So, searchlight rotates. 60 degrees through a circle that has a radius of 110 feet. So maybe I can do a better job of drawing this. Okay, let's start by drawing a circle. Okay, the radius of this circle is 110 feet. Okay, and the searchlight, uh, searchlight's only covering or allowing you to see something like 60 degrees. Okay. So if we're asking what is the area that the searchlight covers, now it may not cover all that 60 degrees all at once, right? It probably has a much narrower span than that. So that's why I'd say it's rotating and covering 60 degrees, okay? What's the area that the searchlight covers around your answer to the nearest square foot? So we have a formula for this, right? What formula do we use for this? Anybody know? All right, what is the formula for the area of a circle? Pi r squared. Okay, so let's start with that, All right? Because we have, you know, a whole area here, but we're looking specifically for this area. So what we're looking for is based upon the area of a circle, except we just don't want the whole thing, right? All right? What would we say, what's a good mathematical term for what we want of it? We want a fraction of it, okay? Does that make sense? So it would make sense that we would take the whole thing, pi r squared, and multiply it uh, by a fraction. Because if we're saying we want a fraction of it, what is of in math? Multiplication. All right, so we want a fraction of the area, okay? What is the uh, whole number of degrees in a circle? 360, all right? So we need, we don't want all of the 360, okay? How much of 360 do we want? We just want the 60. So we want the measure that it's given because on the test it might be a different number, right? Okay. So that's our formula for finding the, air, or the area of a sector of a circle. Does that make sense? Okay. It's a lot easier to get these right if we understand the concept that's behind them. It's a lot easier to remember what to do if I understand the concept that's being used and why it's being used. Is this in your way, Cassie? All right, let me move it out of the way. Okay. All right, I don't know. Is that in your way, Jordan? Ashlyn, is that in your way. All right, so now we start to input some things, okay? Do we need to input anything for pi? No. What about for r? 110, because that's my radius. So 110 squared, okay? Anything for m? I think we've already established. 60 over 360, which if I want to make my life a little bit easier, can I reduce that fraction? If I cancel out the zeros and I work with a number that's a little bit easier, right? What's 6 over 36? 1 sixth. All right, so that gives me pi 110 squared times 1 sixth. Okay, 110 squared is probably a pretty big number. Okay, what's that come out to? Twelve thousand one hundred. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we got twelve thousand one hundred pi. 
times 1 divided by 6. So that would be 12,100 divided by 6. Okay. What's 12,100 divided by 6? Does that give me... Here, I'll kind of take a calculator at this point. 12,100 divided by 6. I'm going to go ahead and multiply that times pi. And we should get something like 6,335. They just want that to the nearest square foot. So I'm going to take it to 6,336 feet squared. I don't know what the answer in the answer key says. Is it that? Okay. All right. Does that make sense? Can we do that if we have to do it again? Okay. Most of geometry class is uh, knowing what formulas to use and knowing when to use them. Okay. All right. Any other questions from number seven? No. Okay. All right. We'll head back up to number four. And don't be afraid to ask any question today because we have the next two days to study. Okay, so we'll make as many videos as we have to make to cover as many questions as we need to cover. Uh, question number four says in RST, so that's triangle, SC equals six. Okay, so SC is this line right here. Okay, that equals six. We want to find CX. Okay, so what is, does anybody know what point X is? what that point would be called. It's called the centroid. Okay. Now, the reason I know it's a centroid is because it's made up of midpoints of line segments that are taken back to vertexes. Okay. So A is a midpoint of SR and I have a line from there that's drawn back to the opposite vertex T. Right. C is a midpoint of RT. It's got a line that's drawn back to the opposite vertex S. Point B is a midpoint between S and T, and it has a vertex that's drawn to the opposite vertex R. That tells me that X is a centroid. Once I know that I'm working with a centroid, all of the line segments are broken into um, defined fractions. Okay. So those fractions are as, okay, are as this. So from the centroid, okay, centroid to vertex, centroid to vertex, okay, is always two-thirds of the total. Two-thirds of the total length. Centroid to side is going to be the remaining one-third of the total length. The relationship of centroid to vertex is that it is double the length of the link or double the length of the centroid to the side because two-thirds is twice as long as one-third. Does that make sense? All right. So they tell me that SC, let me erase some things here. SC, this whole length here, is six okay so but it's going to be broken into something that is two-thirds of this whole length and one-third of that length you could break six into thirds right well, what's six divided by three two okay which means you could break it into two two and two if I want to find CX is CX two-thirds or one-third of that entire length? One-third. So what should CX be? Two, right? Because one-third of six is two. You could say, um, well, of is multiplication, right? So six times one-third is six-thirds is two. Now, if they had been asking instead for what is XS, what would that be? be two-thirds of six, right? Two-thirds of six is what? No, two-thirds of six. Half of six would be three, be four. 
right? If one third is two, then two thirds would be double one third, right? So you just take two times two, and you'd get four that way as well. Does that make sense? Okay, or you take six times two thirds. Six times two is 12. 12 divided by three is four. So there's multiple ways to get that length, okay? Does this make any sense? Okay, if I know the stuff that I see here in green, right, the moment I know that I'm working with a centroid, I have those properties. The numbers might be different, but the fractions will stay the same. Okay? So that's a really good question for us to go over. All right, we'll cover at least one more for this. All right, 28. Okay, uh, 28, a banner is in the shape of a parallelogram. It's got a diagonal that's three feet as shown. Calculate the values of X and Y uh, to the nearest hundred. Okay, um, let me see here. Okay, so notice what do we have here in blue? What is that? A right triangle, okay? What do I have here? You know, that's that represents how many degrees? That angle. 90 degrees, okay? Which means this angle plus this angle equals what? 90 degrees, right? Because there's only 180 degrees in a triangle. If 90 of them are already spoken for, that means that there's only 90 left. So 6y minus 7 plus 4y minus 6 equals what? 90. So I can solve for y based upon that alone, correct? Okay. So what do I do to solve for y from here? Marcus, what would you do? And get what? All right, so he would combine like terms and he'd get 10y. Anything else? Negative 13 with the negative 7 and the negative 6. Good. Okay. Ashlyn, what would you do from there? Add 13 to both sides. Good. Because we're trying to isolate to solve for y. What's uh, 90 and 13? Okay. And then uh, do what, Tiffany? Divide by 10. And I can see that there's some hesitation because it's not coming out to a nice, neat number. But keep in mind, what does this say? Anytime they tell you that, hey, you're going to round this to the nearest hundredth, what's probably going to happen? Are we going to get nice whole numbers? No, probably not. So what does y equal? 1.3? 10.3, right? 10.3, and it didn't even need to be rounded to the nearest, it didn't need to go to the hundredth. If you had to, you could put 10.30, okay? So that's why. Now, what we should also see here, okay, is what do I get there? What is that that I'm looking at in red, Jordan? That I just outlined, what is that? It's a right triangle as well. All right. Can I, I'm going to go ahead and erase this work that we have here in red that solves for y. And we're going to use a completely different property to solve for those x's. Does anybody know what property we're going to use for those side lengths? Right? Because those in for those angles, we just use properties of the angles of triangles, right? But for x and 2x, what do I have to use? Well, if I'm looking for the side lengths of a right triangle, what do I use? The Pythagorean theorem. Okay. What is the Pythagorean theorem, Tiffany? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What's the most important part of that theorem? C squared. What is C squared always? The hypotenuse. Where is the hypotenuse always? It is always the longest side of a right triangle, but where is it always located? Across from the right angle. So what in that right red triangle represents C? 2x. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to substitute 2x. 
Is there anything I need to be careful to do whenever I put it there? What's that? I have to square it, so I just put a 2 right there. The 2x needs to be in parentheses. Does anybody know why it needs to be in parentheses? What will happen if I don't put it in parentheses? Exactly right. What was said is that the only thing that would end up being squared is just the x. We wouldn't end up squaring the 2. The 2 has to be squared as well. And we need to keep that in mind when we work with the rest of this, right? Does it matter what a and b are in terms of whether which one is x and which one is 3? No. Um, Allison, what do you want a squared to be? X. So we're just going to write x squared plus what? 3 squared. And if there had uh, had a coefficient in front of x, we would have also had to have put that in parentheses, right? But because it's just x that's sitting there, we don't have to put it in parentheses. So let's go ahead and simplify. We've got x squared plus what? 9 equals... Uh, let's see. Bell, I'll try to get you involved here a little bit. I'm not sure how well I've got you positioned. Um, what is 2x squared? Oh. Go ahead. What's 2 squared? Four, and x squared is just x squared, right? Okay, so we should get 4x squared. Uh, what do we do after that, Marcus? No clue. No clue. Okay, Cassie? Try to solve for x, right? So we need to get our x's together, so we'll subtract x squared. And what is 4x squared minus x squared? What's that? No? Uh, what's the coefficient in front of that x squared? 1. So what's 4x squared minus 1x squared? There you go. So I got 9 equals 3x squared. All right, Marcus, I'll come back to you. What would you do from there? Divide by 3. Very good. Okay, so we're going to divide by 3, All right? So I get 3 equals x squared. Now, we just want to solve for x, right? How do I do that? I've got an x squared there. How do I undo something that's being squared? Square rooted, okay? A root is the opposite of an exponent. So what is x equal? Radical 3, but notice they want it to the nearest hundredth. What is the square root of 3 as a decimal? 1.73. All right, so we want 1.73 for x and 10.3 uh, or 10.30 for y. All right, do we understand what all we use there to solve that? Okay. All right, so those were the three most missed questions. What other questions from the review do you want to see? And don't assume like, hey, we might as well just work directly from the test. A lot of these questions are on the test. Okay, so if there's something you want to see, let's ask about it now. Anything? Tiffany, you got anything that you missed that we haven't covered? Okay. Allison, anything? Cassie? No? Uh, let's see, Jordan? Nothing. Okay. All right. We will try to move over here. This will let me. Let's. Okay. Okay. Continuation of part one. Try to get our test pulled up over here. Okay. Uh, your first question is going to talk about the maximum area of a rectangle. Okay. What is the maximum 
area of a rectangle that has an, I think, a perimeter, that has a perimeter of, gosh, I'm trying to think of this. Um, Okay. Okay. Let's say a hundred and sixty eight feet. Okay, what is the maximum area of a rectangle that has a perimeter of 168 feet? This is a, this is a good question. It's even a practical question, especially, you know, let's say you, you one day buy a piece of ground and you want to, um, you want to have sheep, goats, or cows on it, right? Uh, do you want that livestock to have the largest area to graze as possible? Likely, right? I mean, that might be a goal. But let's say you only have so much fence, right? Things are expensive. Fence uh, is expensive. All right. How can I assure that with the fence that I have and the space that I have, that I'm giving my livestock the greatest amount of grazing space possible? Okay. Are all rectangles created equal? Right? Um, we can do some tests with this. 168 feet. Right? How, how can I split a rectangle up if I know that the perimeter is 168 feet? Let's say you had something that was very long. Okay? Um, let's say it was two feet. All right, what would the length of it be? How would I find out? 168 what? Wouldn't I subtract 4? All right, we're talking about perimeter. What's 168 minus 4? Okay, 164. Okay, 164 feet left. I would have to take the remaining 164 and divide it by 2 to get my two lengths, right? What's 164 divided by 2? 82, all right, and 82, all right? So I want to find out what the area of that is. What's 2 times 82? Well, wouldn't that be 164 feet squared? Okay, so the area there is 164 feet squared, okay? I can't probably make the, I mean, I can make the width 1 and 1. I can make it 1 foot by, you know, give me a little bit more length right? What else can we try? I, mean, I just want you to, I understand and I know what our answer is going to be and how we're going to find it, but I want you to see why it works, okay? We're, right, we've got 168 feet. Should we add to the width or should we add to the length? Add to the width, all right? So as I add to the width, what happens to the length? All right, so we can make it a little bit wider, but as we do that, the length gets a little less. What do you want to make the width? 10? Does anybody have any thoughts? What should we do here? All right, we'll do this. We'll do one more test round, and then I'll show you what works and why we should do it. So let's say it's 10. Okay? 10 and 10. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do with the 168 feet? If I say that the width is 10 feet by 10 feet, subtract 20 from 168. All right, that gives you what, 148? 
All right, what do I need to do with 148 to find the length? What's 148 divided by 2? Is that what, 74? All right, 74. 74 and 74. So in order to find the area, I need to do what? 74 times 10? 740, right? Now what did you notice happened to the area as I increased the width? As I increased the width and shortened the length, the area actually increased, right? All right. Do, can we assume that that would continue to happen? As I increase the width and lower the length, right, that somehow the area continues to increase. So this is the rule that I want you to understand. The closer that a rectangle gets to becoming a square, a square is the maximum area of a rectangle given a perimeter. Does that make sense? So if I have 164 feet in perimeter, what should I do with 164? No, not yet, because this is perimeter equals 164. All right, so we want to take 164 and divide it by 4. What do I get? 41? Oh, wait, what was my number? Was it, was it 164, was it? Was it 168? All right, 168. Sorry, 168. Okay, 168. Okay, was 42 feet. All right, that means that I have a square, okay, that is 42 feet by 42 feet. All right, what is the area of a 42 by 42 Rectangle. One thousand seven hundred and sixty four feet squared. That's my answer. Do you see how much greater the area became over time? We would have kept going and going and going that way, all right? But that's the difference between something that's two by eighty two, right? all the way up to 42 by 42. Now, if I kept going, right, it would start to get narrower but in the other direction, right, which is why that square is that maximum area, okay? Does that question make sense to us? I don't want you to just think in terms of, okay, on that question, I divide by 4 and then square root, you know, or divide by 4 and then multiply, you know, it, or divide by 4 and square it, okay? I want you to understand that the maximum area of a rectangle is a square. All right, two. Okay. Uh, two is going to talk about two triangles, and it wants you to write a congruency statement. So let's say they give you triangle A, B, C, and they give you triangle X, Y, Z. Okay. Um, they tell you they're just gonna they're not gonna draw you a picture you're gonna have to draw the picture okay uh, let's say BC they tell you that BC is equal to 30 uh, what else do they tell you that AC is equal to 40 And AB is equal to 20. Okay. Uh, then they talk about X, Y, and Z. 